Welcome to part 6 of my Blender for Complete Beginners tutorial series. So in the previous part we had modeled these buttons and we placed them on the snowman and in this part we are going to be modeling a scarf object and then we're going to be using Blender's cloth physics to drape the scarf onto the object. So in this tutorial, as well as showing you how to create the scarf, I'll also be introducing you to cloth physics in Blender. And after you watch this part, if you'd like to watch a longer, more in-depth video on how to use cloth physics, then I do have a cloth physics for beginners tutorial, so you can check out that video with the link in the description. Alright, so to get to Blender's physics, we can click right here on the physics properties. And you can see that there are many different physics that you can add. I'm not going to be going over all of them because there's just way too many of them in this video, but I do have beginner tutorials on rigid body physics. I also have a fluid simulations for beginners tutorial. I also have a tutorial on soft body physics and cloth. So after this tutorial series, if you'd like to learn more about physics, then definitely check out those tutorials. I'll have them linked in the description. But in this part, I'm just going to show you how to use cloth physics. So sort of like how you can add modifiers to different objects, you can add physics to different objects, and they actually will be showing up here on the modifier properties. So what I'm going to do is just select everything with the A key and then I'll just hit the H key to hide it. So we're going to create some very basic cloth physics just to show you what the cloth physics do. So I'm going to press shift A for the add menu. Let's go to mesh and I'm going to add a plane. And I can bring the plane up so hit G to grab and bring it up on the Z axis. And then I can add the cloth to the plane. Now if I hit the space bar, the space bar is going to play the timeline and we can simulate the cloth. Now you can see when I play this, the cloth is just falling down and it's not really doing anything. So what we need to do is add an object here that the cloth can drape on and collide with. So I'll go to the add menu and let's go here and choose a UV sphere and I can scale the sphere down. So now if I hit the space bar again to play this, you can see it just goes through the sphere. And that's because we need to add collision physics to this object. So let's choose collision and now I can press the space bar again and you can see that the cloth falls onto the sphere and it actually stops. Now there's another problem and that is that it isn't actually draping down and that is because the cloth physics uses the geometry of the mesh to make it more detailed. So if you go into edit mode you can see this object only has four vertices. So we need to subdivide this object so that it has more geometry. So a way to subdivide this object is to go into edit mode with the tab key, press the A key to select everything, and then you can use the object context menu. So you can right click to bring up the object context menu. I use the W key because I use the right click select. And then you can click on subdivide. Now after you subdivide it, right above me, you can click on this little subdivide option right here, and you can choose the number of cuts. So I'm going to make this really big. I'm actually going to turn it up to like 20, actually maybe even a little bit more like 40. So if it is higher detailed, then the cloth simulation will be more detailed, but it also might act slower or be more laggy. So I can now close the subdivide settings and I can drag it back to frame zero here. Right behind me, you can see I can just drag this to frame zero. I can also cl middle click and drag to move the timeline. And then I can click and drag here where the numbers are to drag the timeline. And then you can hit the space bar to play. So let's hit the tab key to go back to object mode and I can hit the space bar to play. And now you can see that the cloth actually falls on the sphere. Let's go back to frame one and I can make this much bigger and then I can play this again and you can see we now have this nice cloth simulation. And then also I'm going to use the object context painter to shade it smooth so it looks a bit more realistic. Now I can also press control two and control two is going to add a subdivision surface modifier of two levels. If we go here to the modifiers, you can see it's going to have two levels and you can also see that the cloth has actually been added as a modifier. So as well as cloth being physics, it's also a modifier. So I first want to add the cloth physics and then I want to subdivide it so that it is smooth. And you can see already we have this really cool cloth simulation. Now you can see right here, if I pause it, you can see the cloth is going through itself. So let's click back here to go to the cloth settings and we're going to scroll down here and we're going to open up collision. So open up collision and then we want to check mark this self collision. So I can now drag back to the starting or I can click on this button here to go to the starting and I can play this and you can see now it's actually going to collide with itself. So that looks much more realistic. And there's many more settings, but I'm not going to go over all of these settings. We're just going to use the ones which we're actually going to need in the tutorial. But again, if you'd like to learn more about cloth physics, if this is something you're interested in that you want to learn more about, then definitely check out my full tutorial on it. 
So I'm just going to select everything and then just hit X and we're just going to delete. And then I can press Alt H and Alt H will unhide what we hid. So we have all the objects back now. All right, so I'm going to zoom in here. And so what I want to do now is model the object, which is going to be the scarf. So first I'm going to click and drag the box with all of the head objects and I'll press the H key to hide it. So I can now model the object here. So I'll go to the add menu with shift A and we're going to click here on plane. And then I can move the plane up, so G to grab, and bring it up on the Z axis, and then S to scale, and we're going to make that a bit smaller. So let's press 7 on the numpad to go to top view. I'm also going to press Control A and apply the scale, so this is now the object's new default size. And I can hit the tab key to go into edit mode. So I'm going to scale this down a bit more, and then I can hit G to grab and move this over here, and R to rotate, and kind of rotate that over. And then I will select this vertex, and shift select this vertex, and I can hit the E key to extrude. So extrude that out, and then R to rotate, G to grab, E to extrude, R to rotate, G to grab, E to extrude, and I think you get the picture. So I'm going to continue to extrude that and grab it and rotate it, and we're going to make the shape that we want for that scarf. And I think I might select the whole thing and kind of bring it forward a little bit. I can also click and drag to box select areas and kind of bring them back if I want to bring some of those areas back, which I think I might do. Kind of bring that back and bring that back. Box select this. We'll hit E to extrude, R to rotate. And we're just going to have this circle around. And then we'll extrude it. We're going to have it go all the way over here and extrude it again. And I guess one more time, we'll extrude that out there. Now you can see if I go over here, you can see that it's overlapping and we don't want it to be overlapping. So we're going to click here on the face select and I'm going to select this face here and I'll hit G to grab. We can bring it up on the Z axis. Then I can hold down the shift key and we're going to select these two and I'll hit G to grab and bring those up on the Z axis. All right, just like that. So that will be the basic shape for the scarf. So I'm now going to press Control 2. Control 2 is going to add a subdivision surface with two levels. And you can see that it's round here, but I want to make that straighter. So I'll hit Tab to go into edit mode. I can press Control R to add a loop cut, and I can drag the loop cut over here and place it right about there. And I don't want to place it really close so it's overlapping. I don't want it to be overlapping. I just want to place it pretty close. And then Control R, left click, drag over and left click again just to place that there. So we've added two loop cuts now. So I'll go back to object mode and I wanna actually apply this because I want more geometry so that it looks more detailed. So I'm gonna click on the drop down here and then click on apply to apply that modifier. So if I hit tab to go into edit mode, you can see that there is much more detail to that object. Let's go back to object mode and then actually you can just click on add modifier and you can actually just start to search for cloth. So you can just add the cloth as a modifier and then over here on the physics properties it will be added. All right, so let's drag the timeline back to the starting and I can hit the space bar to play and you can see it just falls down. So we need to select this object here and we need to add a collision. So if we click right over here on the physics, we can just click on collision and that is going to tell it that the cloth is going to collide with the object. So if I hit the space bar, you can see now that is working great. Now as I'm playing this, you can see that it's very slippery and it slides down really fast. So I want to add more friction so that it kind of stops and doesn't slide. So I'm going to select the collision object and we're going to go to the settings here and we're going to go down here to this friction. And this friction we're going to turn up to 50. So now if I play through this, you can see it kind of just stops there because there's lots of friction. Also let's select the cloth and you can see the cloth is going through itself. So select the cloth. We're going to scroll way down here and we're going to turn on the self collision. Collision. So turn that on. We can go back to the starting and play this and you can see it's going to collide with itself But the problem is that because this object is a little bit small the self collision distance is way too small So it's basically colliding with itself before it even starts moving So right here on this distance I need to turn this way down So I'm going to turn this distance value on the self collisions to a 0 0.001 so now if I play this, you can see the collision distance is much smaller, but right here you can see that it's not really colliding with itself. And then also I want to turn up the friction. So this friction I'm also going to turn up to 50. So on the self-collision friction, I'll turn that to 50 so it doesn't slide on itself. So that is looking much better. Now you can see that there's like a big gap here, and so I want to make that gap smaller. So we're going to do the same thing by making that distance smaller. So we're going to go here to the object collisions, and then this distance value, we're going to turn it to the same number. So we're going to turn it to a 0.001. So if I go back to the starting and play this, you can see that's much better. 
Now I do want to go back here to the starting and I actually want to move this around a bit and maybe scale it and then play this again. And that is a bit better. I actually want to maybe let it slide down a little bit. So something like that. Also, it's a little bit too far back right now. So let's go back to the starting here by dragging the timeline. I can maybe move this forward a little bit and then play this again. So just kind of get it to how you want. Um, that's maybe a little bit too far because it's running into the button there. So something like that is pretty good. Now you can see there still are a few issues like this is kind of bumping up and this is kind of bumping up, but we are going to fix that after we apply the modifier. So let's go here to the modifiers and now that we've simulated the cloth, we can click here on the drop down and just choose apply. Now if I hit the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see it's applied that to the mesh. So the mesh is now static so it won't move. So now I can just fix some of the things here. So there's a few spots that need to be kind of smoothed out. And so for this, we are going to use Blender Sculpt Mode. So generally when you're using Blender Sculpt Mode, it's for creating characters and character sculpts, but you can use Blender Sculpt Mode just to kind of smooth out some of the mesh. So to go into Sculpt Mode, we can click here on the Edit Mode and we can click on Sculpt Mode. So with sculpt mode, I'm not going to get too detailed into sculpt mode, but I do have a sculpting for beginners tutorial. You can check out that video with the link in the description if you'd like to learn sculpting in Blender. But what I'm going to do is just change this to the smooth brush. So if I press the T key for the tools, that is going to bring up all the different brushes. And I'm going to go to the smooth brush. So just click there on smooth. And then what I can do is take the strength value and I can turn it way down so that it'll only smooth it a little bit. And then I can just kind of click here and I'm just going to click along. So click and kind of hold your mouse down and you can just kind of smooth out some of the areas. Also, I might make this radius a little bit bigger, so I'll drag that out. And then I'm just going to go along here and just kind of smooth everything out just a little bit. So not too much, but just smooth things out here and there, kind of smooth that out there smooth that out there. So just kind of click and tap or hold your mouse down and just smooth that out. So that's looking quite a bit better. Now you can see there's still a gap here, but we will fix that in a moment. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Once it's nice and smooth, you can just click on sculpt mode and you can go back to object mode. I'll press the T key to close the tools panel. And then also we can use the object context menu and shade the object smooth. Now let's hit the tab key to go back into edit mode. And I want to bring this part up because it is a bit too close to the other part. So I'm going to just select one of the faces. I need to click on the three on the top of my keyboard or click here to go to the face select. And then I will hold down the shift key and I'm just going to really quick hold down the shift key and just select kind of these faces. I'll hit G to grab and bring them up a bit. And then I can hold down the shift key and kind of select these faces here. So shift select those faces, hit G to grab and bring that up a little bit just so that there's a bit more space. All right, I'll hit tab to go back to object mode. So what I now want to do is add that solidify modifier, which I introduced earlier in the series to make the cloth solid. So let's click on add modifier and we can just start to type S O L for the solidify and we will choose solidify. So now you can see it looks much more solid and I can turn up that thickness a bit and just kind of bring it down like that. And then I can also hit G to grab and bring the whole thing down on the Z axis if I want to bring the whole thing down a bit. Now I also want to add a subdivision surface modifier because I want to give it more detail. You can see again we're having that kind of weird shading issue where it's kind of lighter up here but then it's kind of dark and the shading is a bit messed up. So I'll press control one. Control one will add a subdivision surface with one level. And if I scroll down here on the very bottom, I'll make the render and viewport both to one. But I still want to make those edges a bit more smooth because they're very round. So I'll hit tab to go into edit mode and I can add some loop cuts. So again, to add a loop cut, you press control R and then you can move your mouse and then you can left click, drag over and drag it somewhat close and left click again. And then control R to add a loop cut, drag it over here, left click. You can then drag it over to kind of the end, but not the very end. Because you can see if I drag it to the very end, there's kind of some weird issues and it's going to overlap. So drag it to about there and then click to place it. So if I go back to object mode, you can see that edge there is much more flat. All right, so I can press Alt H. Alt H is going to unhide the objects that we hid. We now have that snowman head again. And if you want to, you kind of move this around just a little bit, kind of move the placement of that. And what you could actually do is just deselect everything and then click and drag to just box select the top of the head. I need to hold down the shift key and select those pieces there. And then also hold down the shift key and click on the scarf to deselect it. And I could hit G to grab, kind of move that just a little bit farther back so it's a little bit behind the scarf. 
and maybe even rotate the head a little bit. All right, so press Control S to save the Blender file, and this will finish it up for part six of the tutorial series. And if you're interested in cloth physics and you wanna learn more about cloth physics, then definitely check out my Cloth Physics for Beginners tutorial where I go into more detail. And you can also check out my Blender physics tutorial playlist where I have many more physics tutorials like soft body physics and fluid physics and rigid body physics and other physics tutorials. And if you're enjoying this tutorial series and you'd like to help support the channel to help me keep on creating these free tutorials, then some great ways to do that are by checking out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, you can get lots of Blender content like the finished tutorial files of the snowman. And if you'd like to help support the channel here on YouTube, some great ways to do that are by checking out the YouTube memberships by clicking down there on that join button. And by joining the YouTube memberships, you'll be helping to support the channel monthly and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. You can also use the super thanks feature here on YouTube to send me a little tip in the comments. So in the next part, we're going to start learning about materials and shaders, and I'm going to show you how to add some basic materials to the object. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and also the link will be in the description. So I hope you're enjoying this, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.